Uh, well, I'm just going to share a couple ideas uh, for those of you who coach girls. It's an interesting challenge because they don't possess a lot of the natural creativity that I see in the boys. Um, we can debate why that is, uh, but they kind of like to be told where to stand and what to do, which presents some challenges with the power play. So after 12 years of doing this with 25 teams, I haven't figured it all out, but I can give you some ideas. Um, I would say one of the things I started to do about the half wall, Wally, is I, I told them to think of it as a gate. Like you have, it's a decision gate. By the time you get to the hash marks, you have to have made a decision. You can't stand in the gate and make a decision, right? Like I call it like that revolving door, you know, you go to the mall or the hotel and it's like, it's moving and you can't just stand still because you'll, it's going to hit you in the butt. Um, so we don't, like we would have a player that goes through that gate, but they wouldn't stand at that gate, right? They'd be moving through that spot. And I found for me that, that was a good mix of structure and creativity. So by the time you get there, you have to understand, am I going to move it to the point? Am I going to cycle it low? Am I going to cut across the top? Um, you know, however you want to do it. So that, and we use that same concept five on five. So it's no different um, power play versus five on five play. Um, but uh, again, I'm sure if I told the girls, oh, you're the half wall player, they would stand on the half wall. They would not move through that gate. So I don't use that terminology with them uh, necessarily, nor are they necessarily familiar with it. So I, I don't know that I'm breaking a lot of bad habits. Um, I, I find that even at the junior level, there's a surprising lack of knowledge of terminology and tactical um, in, in general. Uh, again, it depends a lot what midget program they come from, but I'm a little shocked at what they don't know from the tactical side. The other thing I did I don't know who I stole this for because I sure as heck didn't come up with it. Um, I started to number, give each role on the power play a number. So you're either a one, two, three, four, or five. And no one on the team is just a one or just a two or just a three. So you weren't necessarily like the point person or the net front person. But for example, you know, the year I had my best power play, you know, there was a kid we always wanted to be the two. And the two was sort of that half wall player um you know and she was the one who possessed the puck the most and that sort of thing but she was also a one and she was also a three she wasn't necessarily a four and five but it made it really easy to teach because you said the five and everyone knew what the five was supposed to do um but it also made it really easy like if someone got hurt or someone couldn't go so if you had units and you said okay i need a five you weren't actually picking like the best player or the one who had played like you wanted whoever had practiced the five the most so you might have had three fives on your team like true fives right and so if your number one five wasn't on the first power play for whatever reason all right next five and so it especially with the girls and i would argue most of them don't want to be on the power play most of them love the pk and the power play is kind of like yee, for the, whatever reason i don't exactly know why they don't necessarily want to be the one with the ball for the winning shot. Um, so that I think helped their mentality was to see themselves as a number. And again, we had a lot of movement. Like one of the rules I put in the first year that I had like more movement on my power play, I said, anytime someone skates towards you with the puck, you have to cross. That was our whole power play going into the Stony Creek tournament, which is like early September, biggest scouted tournament. Our whole power play. Someone skates towards you, you have to cross with them. You want to drop, not drop, whatever, just cross. And I, I actually look back at video of that and I'm like, wow, it looks like Dom's team doing it. Like they're just flying around and it looked like it looks good. It looks cool. You know, we actually scored a lot and most of them were broken plays off, you know, one of their players falling over or a shot that went off someone's butt. But like it worked. And I, that was by far the most talented team I ever had. I think I had like two or three Team Canada level players on that team. Um, so, you know, the basic concepts with the girls, I, I, again, I just, I don't know that there's that natural creativity or instinct or, well, I'm going to be Backstrom. Like, I bet you if I asked my players, like, what does Backstrom do on the power play? A lot of them would be like, who's Backstrom? And and we, you know, like, I'm Ovi's number one fan. So, like, they should know who Backstrom is because 
the, all our power play clips are, you know, uh, Washington. So we can't rely on that necessarily in the female game to say, oh, just play like Bergeron. What's that mean? <laughs> you know, our girls would know who, you know, um, what's his name? Babyface. Oh, Mitch Marner. Because they think he's cute. Like, oh, I can play like Mitch Marner. You know, like it's not. I'm. I don't mean to demean my players because certainly they are. They're great athletes and they're great people and they work their butts off. But their general hockey ac acumen is is not that great because they don't watch it a ton. And so we actually do have to give them a little bit more structure and understanding of the movements because they just haven't watched it as much as as you know the boys have. So I I think there's that. But again, I go back to if you overstructure it with the girls, and I used to do that, stand here, pass here, shoot here, uh, kind of like the sets or the blocks, or these are our options. And then they get so paralyzed if they can't run the option. Where's that? Where's where's number one? Where's number four? Where's she? She's supposed to be standing here. What do I do? And so I kind of shelved that a little bit more for the creative stuff. So <clears throat> it doesn't necessarily look pretty, but the puck goes in, which is, you know, there's no video next to your goal on the game sheet just says goal. So that's what we're doing. 